The last time these two teams met in a T20 International, it was a rainy Sydney afternoon, hence why I've got my rain jacket on. And the rain just did not stop. What that meant was that India progressed to the T20 World Cup final and England were bundled out in the semi-final with the match being abandoned, simply because India was higher on the points table. No doubt that will be in the back of the English players' minds, but also there is still a series up for grabs. Hello and welcome to Crick Buzz for the T20 preview, but also the preview to match number one. The series is set up thanks largely to the multi-format points-based system that's being used throughout this series. What does that mean? What did I just say? It means that England are ahead six points to four and with three T20s left and two points allocated to the team that wins each of those matches, the series is alive, which is great from a spectator's point of view. Also, the three games will be moved around England. We also see two new squads. For India, the legends of Mitali Raj and Jules Goswami will, will no longer be seen in that format because they've retired, but it does mean we see the next generation, someone like potentially a Richard Gosh. Also for England, Danny Wyatt comes back in and Matty Villiers. So expect that both teams to play a different 11 to what we've seen in the one day format. When we look head to head, for both of these two teams. England are ahead by light years, 15 to four, but that doesn't tell you the story of how close these two teams are. Even when you go a little bit deeper and you look at their past performances, England dominated New Zealand in away conditions, winning that series three zip, whereas India lost to South Africa at home 2-1. It was also the series that Harman Preet Kaur didn't play because she was injured. Smriti Mandana was captain, but also Shikha Pandey wasn't part of that squad, having been the lead fast bowler or seam bowler when they played here in Australia in the T20 World Cup. So, what's going to be the playing 11 for India? Well, Shafali Verma and Smriti Mandana at the top, why not? That's where they first met as an opening duo. Fingers crossed that they're able to click and give India the runs that they need. At number three, Harleen Diol was batting in that position against South Africa, so I expect her to do that and be given the first opportunity. Harman Prikor comes in straight away at number four. I wanna see Richard Gosh at number five, and she had a 44 not out of uh, 25 deliveries against South Africa, so she's got that ability, but she needs to be given that chance. Then you've got the safety net of Dipti Sharma, in that number six, Snay Rana. I mean, she is probably the fine for the India side throughout this series, and she's performed well at the test in the ODIs. So I think you've got to play her as well in the T20s. From there, I'm going to go Puja Vastrika, Tanya Bhatia to be the first line keeper. And then you've got Shikha Pandey and Radha Yadav gets an opportunity because Rajaswari Gaikwad is back at home nursing her injury. It opens the door for Radha Yadav to come in and make an impact. So that's my playing 11 for India. As for England, well, it's gonna be Tammy Beaumont and Danny Wyatt at the top again. And then you've got Nat Siver at number three, Heather Knight at four, Amy Jones at five, Sophia Dunkley, who's the fine for England throughout this series. She comes in and Catherine Brunt, Sophie Eccleston, Sarah Glenn. Then it's an interesting choice for England. Depending on the conditions, they could go with another spinner of Maddie Villiers or they could go with Tash Farron. And Freya Davies gets an opportunity to be the number 11, having picked up four for 20 odd against New Zealand in their away series. So that's the playing 11. Everything's on the line really. And with the series open, you would expect that England will still be favorites. Every time we've moved from you know, the test to the ODIs, they've played really well and India have been left behind and having to play catch up. I hope for India's sake that isn't the case, but I guess there's still questions around where are the runs coming from? If it doesn't come from your openers, where are they coming from? I hope for India's sake 
that Harm and Preet Kaur is able to find some form. Otherwise, no doubt, I expect some changes for India come the second T20. But England are still favourites in this T20. The players to watch in this first T20 international has to be Radha Yadav. We've seen her fiery on the field already, having a little bit of a tussle with Catherine Brunt when she was the subfielder. We saw the passion when they won the third one day international. She was off on the sideline. She jumped up uh, in excitement with the big fist pump. She is raring to go to have an impact. So I can't wait to see the matchup between her and the English openers. Then on the flip side, I'm really looking forward to Danny Wyatt. Surprised not to see her in the one day international squad and the playing 11. And no doubt it would have come as a shock to her. So she has a point to prove. She hasn't scored decent amount of runs in English colours. She has this opportunity now to stamp her authority. So expect her to come out with all, all guns blazing. But I hope the next time I see you guys that the series is all square.